Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you something different than what I normally do. And it is a mixed media project. If you follow my blog, then you saw this, which was my very first mixed media project that I've done. But what I'm doing today is going to be nothing like that. And I actually wasn't even sure that I was going to do a video about this, but when I started it, I thought, wait a minute, stop. Your viewers might want to see this. So let's head on over to the craft table and I'll show you what I've been up to. To start off with, I used um, the front of a Fiber One snack box. <laughs> you can use a cereal box, cracker box, pizza box, whatever you want, and cut it to the size that you want. Um, I actually use the printed side and I cover it with gesso. There's a variety of gessos. This is the one I use and I just paint it on. And let me show you what that ends up looking like. Here we go. This is the one that I did. And as you can see, you can still see some of the writing through there. But for the project that I'm doing, it doesn't matter because it will not show through because it's just not dark enough to show through. But if you're doing this and you want to make sure nothing shows through, you can put a second coat on or you can use the back side. But I like to leave the plain side as the back side. It's just my choice, but it's up to you. Also, don't worry if when you're putting the gesso on and it's all wet that... Um, that the piece of cardboard starts to curve because it will flatten back out again when it's dry. So that's how I start. And now that you have the base, then you work from there. So on this piece, I added things for texture. So I added gauze and paper towel and net tool and um, paint. And later I added some tissue paper. So there's a lot of things that you can add, but this is not what I'm doing today. So let me show you, get this over here. I'm going to be adding these papers. These are actually from a book. Um, it's actually from Hamlet. I picked this old book up at an old bookstore. I love the yellowed pages and everything. And so let me show you how I did this. Really simple. You just tear whatever size piece you want, however you want it. And then I'm going to be using a Distress Ink and a little sponge applicator. And I'm using Vintage Photo, but I also used some tea dye as well. And you just go around the edges like this or at least for the project I'm doing, this is what you would do. And you just ink up those edges. And there is no perfect way to tear. There is no perfect way to ink. In fact, all the imperfections are what make it perfect. So it's that simple. I already have all my pieces done and ready to go. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to be using Mod Podge and attaching all of these just randomly all over this. And just so you know, if you're doing something like this and you don't like what you see, it's just an excuse to add another layer. So let me get started with putting these on.
right, it's dry and I've trimmed off a few of the longer edges that were sticking over because my wonderful husband is going to be making a shadow box for my finished project. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take um, Distress Crayons and I'm going to be using Vintage Photo and I'm just going to kind of go around the edges a little bit just so I can cover any little areas that are showing that, um, you know, didn't get color on them. Gives it a nice little border all the way around. All right, now on to the next step. I have this awesome ribbon I want to use. It's called wired burlap ribbon, but to me it looks more like a twine ribbon. And I just, I love the texture and I think it's going to look really great against that. So I've already cut me off a piece. It's actually a little bit too long, which is fine because I'll just trim off, you know, what I don't need. And it could go on with Mod Podge if you wanted to, you know, get the whole top wet and put it on. But because this is a wire, it tends to pop up. I'm going to use something a little bit stronger. I'm going to be using my Beacons 3-in-1. And I'm just going to put it right along just a couple of the edges. I don't want the whole thing, you know, glued down. Just just a couple of edges to hold it on there. So let me get that done. Okay, that went on there nicely and I love the way it looks. So next, I'm gonna be putting some flowers down here in this corner and I'm going to be staying with the neutral tones. So I'll be using these flowers from Recollections as well as these flowers um, that didn't have a name on the package and instead of having you sit here and watch me try to figure out where I want to put everything I am just gonna go put these flowers on off camera and come back and show you what I did well you're all lucky I did this off camera because it took me about 10 minutes to figure out where I wanted these flowers and to get them put on and you would have been bored silly so this is what I have so far. Got the flowers all on there. And now we're gonna get on to what I'm doing next. So I want to add this key and I'm gonna put it right about there. And I'm gonna use a brad to put it on. I don't want to glue the whole key on. So let me get this set up here. Figure out about where I want the key. And get my little thing here. I don't know what to call this. We're going to call it a pokey tool. <laughs> okay. So we've got itty bitty tiny little Brad. Then I'm going to poke through this hole. And you're going to have to bear with me because I'm going to actually have to go off camera for a second. Here we go. Darn. Okay, give me a minute. I'm going to have to do this off camera so I can get closer to it. Okay, there we go. I got it on. Some things I just have to be a little bit closer to than I can get with a camera in my way. So now I am still not done. I've got this little corner piece here and I'm going to add it right up there in that corner. And I think I'm just going to use my beacons three in one for that. I was tempted to use some um, double sided tape, but I just want to make sure that I can get it into the position that I need it in. And beacons allows me to kind of move things around. Okay. 
Okay, got that on there. Get my glue out of the way here. And I believe this is going to be my finished project. And I hope you like it. It was fun to do, and I just want to let you know that when you're doing stuff like this, you can use anything you want. Whoops. You can use anything you want. Um, it doesn't have to be flowers and keys and, you know, use different metal things or different materials that you want to use. Um, strange things around your craft room that you may not think of. You know, little odds and ends and scraps that you've had. Use it as a way to maybe recycle and upcycle, but just use your creativity in any way that you want because there's really not a wrong way to do this. And it took me a long time to figure that out. And once I understood that, it's now become something fun that I enjoy doing. Well, I was wrong. It wasn't my finished project because I decided to add a ribbon to the key and I wanted to share that with you. And who knows, I may come up with other things to add to this, but at the moment, I think it's perfect. I want you all to know that I got my inspiration from my friend Stacy Evans and she is Pink Poodle Crafts here on YouTube. And now I'm hoping that maybe what I did will inspire you to try this too. So have fun with it and happy crafting everyone. Bye-bye.